What happened at work that made everyone quit at once? I worked at a bread manufacturing plant. This happened in the bagging area. A worker tripped and somehow the way he landed his hand slipped underneath the machine guard and into a chain. Cut off his arm just below the elbow. The supervisor insisted we just wipe off the machine with a towel and continue running the rest of the already baked product. 12 out of 16 including myself quit. I found out later the manager fired that supervisor that day. Company did a survey of employee happiness. It had super limited answers. We filled it out and tried to explain that, internally, our team was doing well and we were happy but just about everyone had problems with two other employees outside the team who were bullies in important positions. The company asked us instead what we could do better so the bullies don't bully us. Over half the team quit within a month which is unheard of at that company and our team was a cornerstone of the entire business. Worked in a call center offering free public transport brochures to people living in a city. The place was poorly managed, it was contracted out by the local government and only cared about numbers. Early during one shift a spate of bombings on public transport killed a load of people around the city. After a few calls of getting abuse from people aghast we were trying to get their details to send them bus and train timetables etc. We collectively stopped making calls. We assumed management would pause the project for that week at least, maybe longer, out of respect for what had happened. Our manager put her foot down and told us we must continue calling that morning, and as we were only on temporary contracts anyone who refused may face being replaced. Then she stormed off. The entire team quit on the spot, we just got up and left without speaking to her again. We called up the work agency to let them know and they did not blame us. We were all replaced but the local government office heard what had happened and pulled the plug on the contract with that call center within a month. I worked at a KFC in the 80s. We had a really cool manager. I was assistant manager along with another, and lots of other great young people worked there. Our manager was hired to turn around the store and he was given a budget to buy new equipment. He also saved money on paper products and got the store really clean with our help. At the end of the year, he was fired by the upper management for spending too much. They then brought in a new manager who immediately set about giving us all a hard time. Everyone walked. The store had to shut down for several days and the new guy brought in his family to help run it. They store shut down permanently a few years later. The district manager offered me a job in management but I just didn't trust them at that point. Worked at Dairy Queen and someone was stealing money regularly during the closing shift. Many of us had a suspicion of who it was and I'm pretty sure most of us told our manager for fear of being blamed ourselves. We were certain it was the assistant manager who was with us on those closing shifts. Instead, our manager started randomly firing younger staff members for any minor discretion and blaming the missing money on them. When they fired me, it was the last straw and several of my co-workers walked out in solidarity. News flash, it was the assistant manager all along. I ended up threatening to go to the labor board and they kind of paid me off. I worked at a bakery a while back, and while enjoyable at times it was generally a nightmare. There was one highlight though, and that was our second manager. We had three managers and the first and third were okay, but they never really motivated people and at times could be very rude. Our second manager however was amazing. She was always encouraging, kind, understanding, and I never heard her get angry. She was the type of person who was meant to be a leader, and she did her job well. Too well. Corporate decided to transfer her to another location since that one was failing, and pretty much everyone quit the moment we found out she was leaving. She was the glue that held us together and I still remember her as one of the best bosses I've ever had. Worked at a chain pizza place. The manager didn't approve of how well we cleaned and prepped for the next day. So we all came into a note saying something to the effect of, you are all replaceable, so we all said okay, took off the uniform and left. We didn't even lock up or close up shop. Just walked off. Phones were ringing for orders, there were people coming into the dining area but nobody was there working. Once she realized nobody was there she was calling everyone and going nuts telling us to come to work or were fired. One person went back and tried to save it. I just reminded her that I was replaceable, and so was the person who signed my check, then hung up. They had to close for about a week or two to replace the staff. The location completely closed and filed bankruptcy less than a year later at least partly due to her leadership. The location is a Verizon store now. Smallish company with a very necessary programming team of five people. CEO spent several hundred thousand dollars repainting and refurbishing the building, deciding he didn't like the color, and got it redone in the same month. 
Then lockdown hit and the company was suddenly struggling for money and the CEO decided to retrench two of our team members. At first we thought that he picked those two because they were less familiar with the systems. But then the other three of us were told by the CEO that those two were in the most rough positions financially, and one was expecting another kid in a few weeks. And that this meant that they could hire them back as contractors for cheap because they'd be desperate. In the next week the three of us chatted among ourselves, all resigned, and they had to keep the other two devs on with their standard paycheck for longer, all while looking for new places to work. Worked at a cheap clothing retail store while I was in college. 15 to 20 hours per week for the first several months, as was most of the staff. Then we got a new manager who decided that the state mandated paid breaks, 15 minutes after 4 hours, were a waste of money. So he changed everyone's shifts to 3 hours 45 minutes or less so no one would get a paid break. Then people complained, so he hired a bunch of new people and reduced the old staff to about one shift a week. Lost pretty much everyone who actually knew what they were doing in less than a month. I heard most of the new people also quit pretty quickly, once they figured out how dumbly the place was run. We didn't all quit at once, but within a week or two of the event. It was an optometrist's office, and I was one of just four employees. The doctor invited another practice to move in and share space with us in our already cramped and disorganized office. We had to do all the work to make room for them. The doctor never broke from her usual routine to help us with the transition, or stayed late as we all did. Then the new doctor arrived having let all of his staff go, assuming that we would work for him, without being paid by him, the practices weren't merging in any way. He hired only one person, who was barely out of high school, who had no idea what they were doing. Guess who had to train them? And the doctor never reduced the amount of appointments we took, we had our usual heavy workload all along. Our patients shared a waiting room with theirs. They were not prompt in taking their patients back, but we were. Their patients threw us dirty looks, and sometimes yelled at us for ignoring them. But we were forbidden from saying anything to them about why we ever helped only half the people who came in the door, or why we couldn't answer their questions and had to redirect them to the least knowledgeable person in the room, the other doctor's one employee. The doctor refused point blank to listen to any of our concerns. We all quit, and the practice sold out to one of the eyeglass chains a few months later. I worked at the largest apartment complex in my area, about 800 units, with maintenance. The office crew had about 10 people and maintenance had 9. Had a great group with an amazing property manager and maintenance supervisor. The property manager took an offer managing a beautiful resort property. In comes the new property manager who had next to no experience, and she starts to try to change things even though it ran fine like it was. She also became a mouthpiece for corporate. Everything they suggested she put straight back out to us. Within a month seven of nine maintenance employees put in their two weeks notice including the maintenance supervisor. The next month five office workers had their two weeks in. A few months later I heard that the new property manager shut down the entire office and maintenance department to take them all to some golf tournament and got herself fired for it. Not quite everyone but three of us handed our notice in within a few days of each other in response to having our wages cut by 20% for 18 months previously to help the business which was really struggling only for the managing director to roll up to work one morning in a shiny new Jaguar. We had already overlooked the extension on his house that was being built. Financial director was no better and spent every waking minute telling us about his skiing holiday he was so looking forward to. They waved goodbye to the IT manager, production manager and head designer all because the company directors got greedy. This wasn't everyone but it was damn close. In a famous park there are ice cream shops. When brining a new container the employees are required to take a sample to verify it's still good. On top of this it was very common that the staff would give other staff free ice cream. Now this is pretty normal most years. This year however we had a new manager. So she thought it was a good idea to fire anyone who had received free ice cream. After this about one third of our staff was fired. Since many people came to work there with a buddy they quit. By the end of the mass leaving we had about one fifth of the staffing we needed to run the kitchens and hotels effectively. So she decided we would work seven days a week and reject all vacation. Many of the workers were not from the USA so they were unsure about labor laws. The company banned the websites for labor industries, health departments and most other government beneficial services. It got so bad that one girl was so overworked, she worked 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. seven days a week, that she just left to go on a week vacation, but out of fear of being fired and deported just didn't tell anyone. They had to call the rangers and get search and rescue involved since she disappeared for about eight days. I'm talking dozens of people searching the woods and helicopters searching. 
eventually she walked back into the dorm well rested and much happier. Thankfully she did not get fired. The manger was fired for breaching multiple state and federal laws on labor. After the rangers talked with her. The company was sued and the workers got an okay payout. It was way back in my high school days. I had a part-time job at a coffee shop. The entire place, it was a fisherman's wharf kind of set up, was managed by the same company. So the bar, the restaurant, the coffee shop, we were all employed by the same bosses. Started off great, then a change of ownership happened, and the new owners were not nice people. They cut back hours, tried to drop wages, all the usual stuff. So the staff was already primed to mutiny when a busy Friday night rolled around. I had a friend who worked with me in the coffee shop. She was a dishwasher, but her duties also included collecting leftover plates from the outdoor dining areas. She also had spina bifida, which meant she wasn't always steady on her feet. Well, the new owners decided it wasn't a good look that she collected the dishes with a trolley, and told her she had to use a tray instead. This led inevitably to her dropping a whole tray of dishes on her way back to the coffee shop. Okay, she might have done it intentionally, but they certainly couldn't prove that. She got yelled at, in front of both staff and customers. And all the staff from the restaurant, the coffee shop and the bar walked out on the spot. The place went under soon after, because I'm guessing they didn't treat the next lot of staff any better than they treated us. We didn't end up quitting, but we threatened to which caused things to change. Our project was reaching the testing phase, which would involve shipping the building-sized piece of equipment halfway across the world, and then the dev team would have to go on a movement of understanding and temporarily relocate with the unit to run the tests for about a year. Normally this is a great thing, because you get a whole bunch of tasty perks for doing it. The customer pays for your housing, which at this location was $10,000 a month just given to you. If you lived in the back of your car for the whole year, you banked $120,000 tax-free. The company gives you a movement stipend, which is used to pay for things like lawn care services so you don't get in trouble with your HOA slash city rules. The smallest, temporary, bonus most people are aware of for projects of this size is on the order of 10%. Part of the reason this exists is to offset the fact that for a quirk of the relevant locations, we'd actually be paying taxes on our pay twice. There was a meeting where our department manager proudly went down the list of every single perk, and explained carefully how the company isn't actually going to do those this time around and how much money the company was going to save for its profit margins as a result. They literally couldn't comprehend why this made us upset. How ripping $120,000 from us without asking might cause issues. How removing the movement stipend, forcing us to pay out of pocket to have someone else mow our own lawns because we weren't there while working for them, might be annoying. And how the removal of the bonus meant that for the length of the project, we'd all actually be taking a pay cut due to the double dipping on taxes. She just looked at us blankly when these concerns were raised before shrugging and asking why we couldn't just be happy working in a tropical paradise. It was pointed out by an old salt grade worker, the sort they can't fire because they are too important, that working up in the Arctic Circle is actually preferable, because when you're working 16-hour workdays 7 days a week for a full year straight, you don't really regret not being able to go outside when it's cold enough to freeze your eyeballs in minutes. The department manager informed us the decisions were final and we just have to deal with it so every single member of the team said we were turning down the offer to go on the mow. Which meant that in order to find people to do it, they'd have to bring in unrelated engineers, none of which were trained on the system. It would take around four to five months of them training to be able to perform the necessary tests, during which time the unit would just sit there and do nothing, costing millions in site fees, and guaranteeing the company failed to make the redline deadline for progress. A deadline that if failed to be met constitutes an immediate cancellation on a contract worth a non-trivial portion of a trillion dollars over the next 80 years, in order for the runner-up company to give it a go. I'm told they eventually restored some of the perks, and people were informed that their behavior was noted in their company profiles as a negative that will be weighed in all future raise and promotion discussions. I didn't care because I quit to go back to university to get a master's degree in a completely different field. There was a staff of 10. At the beginning of last year it was agreed if more than 50% were out sick with COVID we close the place down for one week and then reasses. Nine of us were out with COVID at the same time including the boss. He threatened to fire the last person if they didn't go in and cover for nine people including the boss. We all quit within the next month. Like hell did any of us want to be in that position especially when the plan we co-constructed wasn't honored. We worked at a startup with amazing co-founders. Our CEO and COO were the coolest people I've met. Our company was doing well, we were some 6 to 8 months away from break-even and cash burn was so low, we hadn't needed funding in almost 5 years. 
The startup was funded by foreign VCs who had no understanding of local market. They wanted insane growth when the industry we were in just didn't have that kind of growth potential. So the VCs got the co-founders fired. Five of eight departmental heads and at least 15% of total employees of the company quit within the next three months. Back around 2000 SQL Server was a hot skill to have, and big data was a license to write your own salary. Despite this a new CEO came into the company I was at and decided to show that he was boss by immediately firing the server team manager. The manager had a new job with our main competitor the same day and immediately got the entire server team positions and a significant pay rise. The entire team handed in their resignation the very next day. Worked at a company as a software engineer. We were a group of employees under an org but with no reporting manager. We just worked in our projects with our project managers and functioned well. We were happy. Then comes in new management. They decided we needed a reporting manager and the guy assigned was super toxic. After a few complaints from the whole team and no action from upper management, most of us quit within a few months. I think we went from being 20 or so to 8 when I left, and I heard that the rest followed shortly after. Only when everyone left did upper management think it was a good time to reevaluate the reporting manager and they relieved him of his role and moved him to a different one, they couldn't even have the guts to fire him, but by then it was too little, too late. I worked at a petrol station when I was 16. One time we were robbed and a colleague was forced to empty the cash register at gunpoint. They took about 3,000 euros in cash and about 5,000 euros worth in cigarettes and tobacco. Our boss expected the heavily traumatized colleague to pay back the whole value that was stolen, because he could have just refused to give them anything. He obviously couldn't do that and refused to work for free for four months, so he was fired. He was a single dad with six-months-old twins. All of us seven colleagues quit our jobs there immediately. 